Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett, and today I'm going to be doing a buyer's guide for Wi-Fi home devices. And as far as things goes, I want to mention that it is 2017 at this point right now. And um, I think this guide will be valid for the next five years, give or take. The reason why I'm bringing that up is the Wi-Fi home market has massively changed over the last six, even now to three months, but last six months it's really changed new technologies that were only enterprise or majority enterprise is coming to the home market more and more so each few months you hear an air brand go into something like mesh technology or one of the others so i'm going to get into that um, i'll try to keep it as um, simple as possible so the average person will understand this and know how to research their products and understand what they're looking into so get into here three things that you need to keep in mind whenever you do your research or a given looking at a given wi-fi device for your own house things that you need to ask yourself and look at your own situations is first is security this being that um are you worried or or is there a potential for someone walking down the street, driving by or whatever, being able to get wirelessly onto your stuff. Uh, maybe you're in an apartment, but on the other hand, once if you're in the middle of nowhere and don't have anyone nearby, you probably aren't worried about that as much. The other type of security you might want to uh, focus on is the remote access security. So, for example, if you have someone that, uh, plays games on, in their household or might play games in their household in the next five to ten years they might tick someone off or or maybe they they're a public figure or, or becoming a public figure um, and you might have some problems where the person will um, make someone mad or someone gets jealous or whatever and tries to hack into your uh, remote thing even if that's not going to be the case at all you need to make sure that the remote aspect of it is secure because i'll get a little bit more into this type of uh, hacks so the second thing is the devices that you currently have how many wireless devices that you have the type of wireless devices you have and specifically with the type you're looking at the 2.4 gigahertz versus 5 gigahertz i'm going to touch into this a little bit into this video feel free to do for the more research into this uh, as far as the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz but the bigger thing that you need to keep in mind is how many devices and the types that you're going to get in the future so you might not have like a wireless thermostat but one day you might you might not have a tv that hooks up to the internet but one day you might in all these devices you, you might say okay i might get a wireless thermostat and maybe this that or another but you need to think of it as how many devices will be connected to the wi-fi at one single point so just think of all your devices if it connects to wi-fi at single point for a standing period of time um how many would it be and i'll get a little bit more into that in a second and last is the range and area and by the uh, range is obviously how far away are the devices going to be from the actual um, wi-fi unit and also the area what's in between the wi-fi unit and the actual device itself is it uh, concrete this is a, it's like maybe a school well maybe maybe like apartment maybe you, you got it's a um a weird shape apartment and you have a bunch of people in the middle all the time stuff like that you gotta think about even even individuals uh we humans block wi-fi signal very slight amounts but you still gotta think about that so if you got like a party full of people and you're trying to get a good wi-fi signal for them then um you gotta keep that one in mind so as far as that goes that's that's a huge Huge thing that you got to keep in mind for your case, and this is your case only. So let's get into the security aspect because that's going to be the easiest one to get into. Security aspect is we all know 
that Wi-Fi, it, um, you need to have a strong password on your SSID, your, your Wi-Fi. And you need to actually be able to understand that the Wi-Fi itself for admin permissions and stuff, you need to have a good password. That's, that's a given across the board. But you need to make sure what other type of features that, and if it applies to you, is there features on it that will stop hacking from like art poisoning? I got videos on these type of things if you want to look into it in detail. But art poisoning, DDoSing, stuff of this nature, or is it just a basic Wi Fi unit that simply um, you can tweak a little, but for the most part, it just um, takes in and, and receives, it, it takes in and, and pushes out uh, signal. So that's a big thing that you got to keep in mind is, is the security. And um, the f remote security, that goes into it itself. You need to be, make sure that um, it, you, you know where the log is and stuff of this nature. Most Wi-Fi units have logs. Now keep in mind, if you get something like a Google Wi-Fi or one of Google Wi-Fi type of units, you log in through it with a mobile access and you don't have to worry about the password stuff because that's purely account based system so that's something to keep in mind but the rest of the market is pretty much um like i just mentioned where you got a password and whatever so the devices um and device type you have 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz 2.4 gigahertz is slower there's more 2.4 gigahertz out there than 5 gigahertz, but you still need to plan for the 5 gigahertz range. Cell phones, tablets, things of this nature tends to be 5 gigahertz. Some laptops, newer laptops, are going into 5 gigahertz and, and fewer things like that. So note that 5 gigahertz is much faster, but the big thing to note is 5 gigahertz does not go as far. Uh, for, from the access point, which is the Wi-Fi unit. So that's that's something to keep in mind, and also how many devices that you currently have that will be wirelessly connected to it. Wired connected to it, don't worry about it. Wirelessly connected to it, that's what you need to keep in mind. Wirelessly connected. Mo most uh, people don't know this, but all Wi-Fi routers, enterprise or not, has a device limit onto it. Um, and, and I'll get into this in a little bit, but you need to keep in mind with what I just said about well, device limit, because it might actually uh, force you to buy one Wi-Fi unit versus another, or type of technology versus another. Then we got a range and area. So the range being, how, again, how far it is in the area. Do you have concrete, or do you have like a Faraday cage type of, of stuff around, or or a bunch of people that it's going to be in between and stuff of this nature. People into itself tends to be um, the Wi-Fi going through it. It's uh, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. It doesn't matter. Wi-Fi going through them is almost like going through sheep rock type of wall. It's uh, I think it's like a 3 dB or 0.3 dB or something like that. Very, very low. It's the best example or the most common example that's given with what sheep rock and wi-fi signal is it's basically like a paper trying to stop a bullet it's not going to do it but if you got enough papers behind it it will stop a bullet it's like shooting shooting a book versus you know shooting a single piece of paper you know if you got one person there it's not going to be much of a problem but if you got 30 40 50 whatever or if you got a number of walls it has to go through Keep in mind, um, each wall has to go through that dramatically can drop that signal because, again, it's like shooting a book versus shooting a, a single piece of paper. The um, things you got to worry about is uh, metal pipes, um, uh, water, uh, especially if it's uh, not filtered in the pipes, which it really shouldn't be um, um, in most units. Uh, the metals in the water is what, what's going to cause a problem. The um, other things is concrete, uh, metal, stuff of this nature. Um, basically, things that stops radio signal. That's what Wi-Fi is. 
things that will stop a antenna from working. So, um, and and uh, that's that's the biggest thing to get keep in mind. Now, as far as the uh, Wi-Fi unit itself, you might be seeing something like this, where it has a whole crap load of antennas, whereas this has six antennas, and you might have some units that has three antennas. You might have some units that have one antenna. Well, here's the thing: is the antennas, um, the antennas being there, the amount of antennas does actually matter. But the uh, antennas, the the actual of them showing, uh, even though this kind of looks, you know, all right or whatever, depending on your opinion on it, it doesn't do anything. It's just for show. That's something a lot of people don't understand. It's literally just for show. Um, Base most tennis. I I'm I'm pretty sure this is omnidirectional. Uh, there's no indication there isn't, but omnidirectional basically means at the antenna, it'll be a sphere going out. It won't be a exact sphere, but it'll be very close to a sphere going out. Like in a perfect world, it'll be a sphere going out. That's what omnidirectional means. It's going out on all directions, up, down, left, right, sides, and whatever. It's going in a sphere going out. Obviously, it's not a sphere. Think of it more like water in the air. Uh, like, like if you ever deal with um, aerodynamics in airspace or maybe fluid dynamics for water and air and whatever because air is fluid. Well, the thing is, is radio signals are... are uh, they're not classified as a fluid, but they act like a fluid as far as them going around objects. The, uh, the radio signals can literally go around objects, just like a fluid. Uh, radio signals can, uh, you know, uh, be stopped by certain stuff by uh, quote unquote drag, which is just basically stuff being in the way and whatever. But, um, that's just something that I keep in mind with the radio signals from that. And um, because it's omnidirectional, if it shows the antennas, okay. If it doesn't show it, okay. And you might be saying, okay, I want to go and put something that is directional onto it. I've seen that a few times. Here's the problem with it. Okay, you want to use a standard, fine. But if you want to use a directional antenna to push out the signal far enough, it is possible to do that, but it, it's po on some Wi-Fi routers. But it's also possible to push it out so far that your Wi-Fi router, your, your your device. So, say for example, you could be a mile away from your Wi-Fi router. Your device can see your Wi-Fi router, but your device does not have enough power to transmit a mile away. So the Wi-Fi router cannot speak to your device. Your your device might say. Oh, I see it full bars, but it can't talk to the Wi-Fi router because uh, the device simply does not have the power to do it, to, to transmit that far. That's very important to note. Um, it's not necessarily about a range because of that. And, and, and uh, I'll, I'll mention a little bit more about the uh, other problems. But it's not about a range because you can easily run to that scenario, especially with some high-end routers that advertise, yes, this works half a mile away or something like this. I, I, I was tricked into it before I, I started getting into degrees and stuff, into Cisco, Cisco routing and stuff. And before I, I, I got into network engineering and stuff like that, I wasn't even tricked into this stuff. Um you can easily be messed over paying two, three hundred dollars, or even a hundred dollars for a stinner or a good Wi-Fi router, pushing signal out so far that uh, you, you don't know that your device has to be able to to speak to the router itself. It, the the device just because it can push signal that far doesn't mean I can receive signal. So that, that's just something that you gotta note into itself. So as far as that goes, the other thing I'll mention here is the um, the actual amount of devices. This is a major thing that you have to realize. Um, if if you have five devices, this shouldn't be a problem. If you're expecting to only have five devices or less, that shouldn't be a problem. Once you get into 10, 
15, 20 devices, once you get into these numbers, you should start worrying. 10, you might be okay. 15, you really need to be thinking about using um, either extenders or a mesh technology. And then once you get into 20, you need to be thinking about doing mesh technology. So as far as what's the difference between mesh and, and the other, well, first things first is the extenders are simply the router, home router base. It, it uh, communicates to the extender. The extender pushes out a little further. Stuff can communicate to the router itself, but he, uh, um, the extender for things that are too far out that might be able to see and talk to the extender itself, which is fine. The problem with a stinner is they are a pain to to, to uh, deal with, and you really this is something I also didn't know back in the day when I first started getting into these things. Is um, you really need to go with the stinners with the same brand as the router, so they best cooperate with each other. One of the biggest things I, I found is yes, you can find a stinner with high reviews and stuff, but if your router does not play nice with the extender or a stinner doesn't play nice with the router then it doesn't matter about all the reviews and stuff. That's why you need to make sure it's the same brand. So if you buy an Asus router, make sure it's this Asus extender. If it's a uh, Netgear router, make sure it's Netgear extender. Stuff of this nature. That's fairly important because, of again, it needs to be able to play nice. Now, you might be able to get around that. Okay, you found a extender for $20. You, you, you can deal with things, but... But uh, really, you need to be looking for something all at the same brand. Now we get into mesh technology. See, what happens, as I said before, with the uh, example with a bunch of the antennas and whatnot, that um, th this is actually one of the best Wi-Fi routers you can get to date. The problem is, is I don't think it's a good Wi-Fi router to get. Yeah, yeah, I said it's the best Wi-Fi router you can get, but the problem is, is it it's um, out of date in some areas. Um, basically, what you have is mesh technology that's recently hit the home market. Mesh technology's been out since a while now. I think the '80s. Not really sure, but it's been out for quite some time at enterprise level. But it's only been in the last six months. It's seriously, it's, there's been some things come out once in a long while on a home market. But it's seriously started hitting the home market between Netgear, Google Wi-Fi, and a few others. It's been kicking up. Um, they, they've been really starting to push out mesh technology. What is the difference between mesh technology and a, something like this, a uh, normal Wi-Fi router. Well, the thing is, is uh, any Wi-Fi router, um, I'm going to call it an access point because that's the technical term for it, for the, the transmission portion of it. Any access point, how it works is one device can communicate to it at a time. So if you got 10 devices and each one takes a second for Device one to talk to it again, it takes 10 seconds. So the, this is okay, but the problem is, is the entire network has to slow down to the slowest device on the list. And then that means they can have timeouts. The more devices you get, the more likely it is that you'll have timeouts or your entire internet speed will slow down. Not due to your ISP, not due to your modem, not to do anything else besides the fact is you're using the wrong technology. You need to be using. There's um, two types of technology you need to be looking at, but one of them is mesh, which I highly recommend because it, it um, helps with this a little bit more. It tends to be um, uh, better as far as the future of IoT devices. But the other is something called a uh, MIMO, M-I-M-O. This is multi-in, multi-out. So if the, and I don't have an example here. I know, th I think this is a, a MIMO type of uh, router. Uh, there really isn't too many. In fact, I think this and maybe two or three other type of routers are uh, MIMO, M-I-M-O, and they're only two by two. 
But uh, what you need to be looking for when you're looking at, uh, when you're doing research on a given router is put in MIMO and uh, MIMO capable or MIMO something. And um, you might you might get some extra things onto that MIMO. But if it says something like a 2x2, two 3x3, two, 4x4, four four, or whatever, that means it's capable. Basically, what a uh, two by two means that it can take, it can read two devices, or it can send out to two devices. So basically, where that first scenario where you have ten devices, each one of them takes a second um, to to get done talking. Well, what happens is the um, that ten seconds cut down to five seconds with with. Uh, two by two because it talks to two devices, so it cuts down that time quite a bit. Uh, three by three, four by four, obviously cuts it down even more so because you know to three devices, four devices. The most I've seen out there is four is four by four, but the most I've seen on a home Wi-Fi base is a two by two. Enterprise tends to be three by three, four by four, and you're tend to get the major dollars. Um, half a thousand two thousand dollars per access point and that doesn't include a router and stuff um it, if you want to know more about that i can get into it in videos you can do research and i think i've already gotten into this stuff in other videos as far as enterprise level stuff but it's very important to note that these are the two type of technologies that you need to be looking for mesh and mimo MIMO, MIMO, whatever you want to call it, but M-I-M-O, multi-in, multi-out. Mesh Networks has a uh, MIMO. Um, that, that's pretty important to note. Any actual mesh network. Now, marketing, by, and this is very important. A uh, marketing person, they might say, oh, this is a mesh router, but it isn't. So the thing, the difference between a mesh router and a normal router is a mesh router, the roots, the, the base, basically you buy several routers. Um, they, they look completely different from this. Uh, usually like small pucks or little things. Um, they don't have to transmit as far. And it's fairly important to note basically how it works is you have multiple routers. Each one of them is cheaper than and something like this. As powerful or just about as powerful as something like this. And basically what happens here is you put these multiple routers out through your entire house. One of them connects to the internet. And you can add to other things like a uh, switch or whatever else. But one of them connects to the internet. I use Google Wi-Fi, by the way, if you want to just skip it and get to that there's there's probably gonna be better ones in the future depending on when you're watching this but it, what happens here is you need to use three or more of these to get the actual advantage what happens here is the um, device load is shared between those access points so each access point is uh, like, like with Google Wi-Fi it's a two by two so basically um if it was all going on one router being a two by two then that will cause some slowdown and stuff whereas it, it's going and delegating through the uh different access points and it does it by itself you you, you don't have to do anything you just got to plug it in make sure that you put in a proper password and whatever make sure it's plugged into the internet and it's good to go type of thing Mesh network basically is a self-healing, self-setup type of network. There is minor setup uh, when you get into enterprise, um, minor to major, depending on on things. But for home level, it usually is like almost a plug-and-play, like a normal router. Basically, you just got to make sure that you put it in the right spots. It will tell you, oh, it's too far or too close, depending on the type of uh the, the brand and basically what would end up happening is the um the the router itself will um work uh, it's as simple as that if 
like the neat thing with with access point with, with the mesh technology with access points on that is instead of using a, a standard like so for example the first thing that you might think of oh i need to push my um, um, signal out further or use a standard to get out further to for my devices way out to see it i can use this to push my my um, network out far farther and as long as um, I don't go too far, uh, ha houses, you want, you're pretty much not going to have this problem. I have entire videos into this. I'm, I'm not trying to get too deep into it, but I got entire videos in detail on this, on what I mean on this type of stuff, the downfalls of mesh technology, the plus sides and stuff of this nature. And I might link it down below. But basically, the uh, the big thing is is... I can actually, instead of having access points for the same price as access points in, uh, in a router, I can buy a whole slew of these mesh networks, me mesh access points, hook them up, and, and um, it'll work just as fine. And, and the cool thing with a mesh network is it's the same thing that you'll find in like hotels and a few other things where you're able to walk to, from one side of the building to the other side. Even though your phone or whatever is going from one access point to the other, you won't be able to tell. There will be no actual downtime in the streaming, gaming, and stuff of this nature. It's fairly important to note. Um, the only way that you can tell is by actually using tools to scan and stuff of this nature. Um, outside of that, you won't be able to tell. It's as simple as that. But the biggest thing I, I want to get with the mesh technology and the reason why I like it so much is unlike a single router taking in, say, 20 devices, um, imagine that router as a person and it has to do 20 different tasks. Well, wouldn't it be better to have multiple people doing the 20 tasks to get it done quicker versus having that single person? Same thing happens here. Having one router to deal with 20 devices or more, give, give or take, depending on how much you got, is worse, much worse off than if you have the ability to just have a mesh technology where you have multiple access points deal with the uh, load and and the load is automatically delegated back and forth on on whatever's the la least suggest the access point so as far as that goes again i'll leave a link down below to the uh to the uh, mesh technology uh i think i got one there one in, in the mimo mimo type of thing maybe in a separate video i'll leave a link down below to that so you can check it out in detail but hopefully this helps you out and figure out which type of Wi-Fi router you, you want to get. There's extra things that you might want to look into if you if you really want to push for it. Is Some Wi-Fi routers have bells and whistle type of features where you can see what device is taking how much of what, what of your internet. And then you can have um, different channels and stuff like that. Um, that's I think that's a little bit of advance for a um, basic guide like this but if if you want my advice on the channel stuff because I'm, there's no real purpose of me making an entire video on that you need to have a Wi-Fi router that automatically deals with the channels basically you want to go with the least crowded channel in like something like the Google Wi-Fi or some of these others at, the, at night time or when people aren't using the Wi-Fi as much or at all, what happens is is the uh, router itself will check the channels. And it, it checks the channels periodically out through the day, and then it figures out, okay, I need to switch to this channel, um, and that way it's it's not as congestive at all. Um, that way if you got like a bunch of people in an apartment or whatever, um, you don't have everybody jamming each other, or at least you don't have everybody jamming you. you, don't, you probably don't care about everybody else. You don't have everybody jamming you, so your stuff automatically switches. Note that if all the channels are used up, then you're, pro you're still going to have problems and there's nothing you can do about that. But um, with that being said, if you want to, to find a, a router that deals with channels, just try to find one that does automatic channel switching. 
So anyways, as far as that goes, if you've got any questions or anything else, then feel free to let me know, and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. And leave a like, subscribe, share, and um, I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day.